Thank you. Thank you, Pastor Chris and Pastor Jeremy for frisking me there <laughs> while, before I get onto the pulpit. Uh, what a wonderful privilege. I want to thank Pastor Sean, Karen, and their absence, but I have been received so warmly, uh, so great to be here. And welcome, everybody. Carl, you guys did a great job. Really, really so important for God is here already. It's not that they're leading us into the presence of the Lord, but they made us so aware of the presence of the Lord. And thank you for that. And thank you for coming on a cold winter's morning. It was so cold this week, I saw on television a politician with his hands in his own pockets. <laughs> right, are you ready for the word? Amen. Amen. There's a saying in English when two things are totally, completely different from each other, they are like chalk and cheese. And it's very easy to recognize the difference, but some people do not even know chalk from cheese. And I brought a, a small piece of chalk with me this morning because I, I want to say, if you know anybody that does not have that kind of discernment, do not ever accept a cheese sandwich from them. Now, it's fairly easy, I think, to discern between chalk and cheese because they do not look the same. They don't have the same function because chalk can only write, but cheese you can bite. And uh, even when you say chalk and cheese, the words uh, don't sound the same. But what about when things start looking or sounding the same, like the following, chalk and chalk? At least you can see that they're different, but they, they kind of sound the same. So in this situation, you might need greater discernment, but you still cannot eat the chalk. But what about when things look the same and you have chalk and chalk? Then you need real good discernment because you need to know which is the, the, the real one. Now... It's, it's like, for instance, this piece of chalk. You need to know that it's real. It'll take me a while. <laughs> but obviously it wasn't real chalk. Some nice sweets. You can get them in the shop. <laughs> but here's what I want to say to you now. As I said, let me just finish my breakfast. What you need in a situation like that is discernment. And I'll give you a very simple definition of discernment. And I'll, this is an unadorned basic definition. I'll tell you more about that as we go along. But discernment is the ability to distinguish differences. And it's something that we need desperately in our lives. Some people do not seem to have that discernment. They cannot see the difference between things. And if you are one of them, I have good news for you. Because we're going to speak about discernment. And while the talk is about chalk, I've decided to use a chalkboard to just give my title of my message. And it's learn to discern. Now, if you don't know this, I'm privileged to be here for the next two Sundays as well because I need a whole series, serious, <laughs> because you cannot speak about discernment in just one session. And I'm going to go into the detail here, and I want us to begin to learn some things about discernment by reading just this one scripture. And I'm going to come back to the scripture later in Hebrews 5, verses 13 and 14. And listen what it says. Everyone who lives on milk 
is unskilled in the word of righteousness since he's a child, and obviously spiritually speaking here. But solid food is for the mature, for those who have their powers of discernment trained by constant practice to distinguish good from evil. So there, the Bible is very clear about the fact that if you are a mature believer, you should have discernment. Now, uh, here's the, the very first principle. I want to start at the beginning. Here's the first thing we need to understand about discernment. Let us define discernment. Let's get all the wrong concepts out of the way. And before I get to even to the biblical meaning, let me look at it just from a, an ordinary secular perspective. I want to quote some uh, definitions from dictionaries. And, and here's the first thing that I want to get out the way. They used to be, and thank God that they do not, they're not allowed to advertise cigarettes and uh, things like that any longer. But I remember a, an advertisement that spoke about the discerning smoker, the cigar connoisseur. My goodness, that's not the kind of discernment I'm talking about. That just means that person has good taste concerning a bad habit. And that's not what I'm talking about. So the word discernment, as I said, is the capacity to perceive differences that actually exist, or the quality to, um, to evaluate then and to make a wise decision. The trait to have insight into the significance or the importance of something. And as we go along, I'm sure it will become more clear. So that's what the world gives us as a definition of discernment. Now, I always like to study the etymology of words. And for those of you that need to go and look up the word etymology, it speaks about the origin and the history of how words developed. Don't confuse it with entomology, which is the study of insects. Although for me, it's like the same thing because if I don't know what a word means, it bugs me. <laughs> but our English word, discern, comes from a Latin word, and I'm sure I'm not pronouncing it correctly, and I cannot find out whether it is correct because all the people who spoke Latin are dead. But here's basically what the word is, discernere. First part of the word dis means off or away. I think young people use that word maybe in the same way when they diss you. They actually, they say, off with you, away with you. And then the second part of the word is very interesting because it describes the essence of discernment. It means to separate, to sift, to distinguish. So basically what the word says in its uh, original meaning is to take things and to separate them away, off from each other, so that you can recognize exactly what the things are and then make a proper um, decision about that. Now, I don't want to get ahead of myself because otherwise I have nothing to say next week, but I'm going to show you that the Bible is actually our sieve. It's our filter. It's like a tea strainer. And that is what we need to use to filter everything that we see, everything we hear, everything we experience in this world. We need that gift of discernment now more than ever before. And um, so, so that's what the, the word means in English. When we get to the Bible, there are two main Greek words that are used, and it actually highlights the same concept of sifting, of separating. I don't want to bother you with the words, but they are interesting, so let me tell you what the two main words are. The first one is anakrisis. It's not a woman who's having an emergency. <laughs> the, the prefix anna here means between, and the last part of the word crisis actually means decision. So again, it's the thing of separating and seeing the, the distinction between 
things and then making a decision. A decision is a very important part of the whole discernment uh, process. Uh, there's another similar word with a different prefix, diakrisis. Diakrisis is not a, some political party who's in a predicament. It, the word dia means thoroughly. So it speaks of a thorough separation and investigation, et cetera, et cetera. So if I can speak about the process of discernment, it, it involves the following elements. Separation, first of all, to be able to put things um, on their own, uh, away from each other. Then investigation, looking at what is the right thing to do or to follow Recognition, looking at the value, evaluating that, and then decision. That's vitally impor important. So, let me uh, kind of bring a proper definition then of discernment. The ability to separate and distinguish for the purpose of investigating intensely and examining closely in order to evaluate and make a good and wise decision. I need that in my life. And I'm sure all of us do. So, there are uh, a, a, a number of things we have learned about it, but let's get to a biblical definition of discernment. And I want to call it spiritual discernment. I'll explain it in a while. Spiritual discernment is the ability to distinguish Truth from untruth, right from wrong, good from evil, established on study of God's written word with the help of the Holy Spirit. Because I'm not clever enough to make that decision or that distinction. I need God's word, and as I said, God's word is our filter, and I need the, the help of the Holy Spirit. So, having... Uh, now define discernment. Let's look at what the Bible says about discernment. There are uh, different kinds of discernment. So after we've defined it, we need to identify different kinds of discernment. If I can put it this way, we need to discern between different discernments. Here's the first kind of discernment. Let me call it natural discernment. And this is available to everyone, whether you're born again or not. God has gifted every one of us with something that we would call common sense. Now, sadly, common sense is not always that common. <laughs> because it seems like some have more of this than, than others. But I want to encourage you, even that could be, be learned could be developed, could be extended. Now, the common sense is, is just the, the, the basics. Uh, if, if you have common sense, it means you're just a little bit smarter than the rest of the plebs. That's a compliment, by the way. <laughs> There's another uh, uh, <laughs> phrase for common sense is called horse sense. I don't know why. But it basically boils down to just a little bit smarter than a donkey. <laughs> You've got a horse sense. I looked this up and I found another synonym for common sense, mother wit. Mother wit means you're just smarter than some fathers. <laughs> <laughs> and then I don't know if you've heard this one. There's the word gumption. So, we all have gumption. Gumption means you're just a little bit smarter than Forrest Gump. That's basically what it boils down to. So, let me say this very clearly. Thank God for common sense. Thank God for natural discernment. But you need more than that. But the sad thing is some of us don't even use common sense. And sometimes we can get so super spiritual that we overlook common sense. And so... Um, Although we call it the common sense of man, I want you to realize that even this is a gift from God, and we need to appreciate that. Uh, so, it's natural wisdom that comes from God, but 
it could be corrupted, it could be abused, uh, it could be perverted in a sense, so it must be properly developed. I've uh, written down these words because I think there's truth in this. Stupidity is like a bad weed, but wisdom is like a good seed. And, and you know, if you know anything about weeds, foolishness grows by itself. You don't have to sow it, you don't have to water it, it just, <laughs> it's just there. But wisdom needs nurturing. It needs developing before it can bear fruit. So, even if common sense could help you in discernment, it has its limitations. And I want to take you to a scripture in the Bible, because I don't want to spend too much time on this, where Jesus describes a person, let me use another a word here for common sense, being streetwise. Now, streetwise has the added meaning of you are able to use your, your common sense to kind of um, uh, uh, survive in a, a maybe dangerous urban environment. And Jesus speaks a parable about a dishonest manager. Please go and read it at home in Luke 16. And you'll find that this guy was in trouble, and he knew that he's, you know, I'll give you my version of it, his boss was going to fire him. Before he got fired, he had the authority to uh, um, do favors for some of his clients. So obviously what he did, he cooked the books and he said to some of the clients, he said, you don't have to pay what you owe, uh, I'll, I'll sort it out for you. It's, it sounds very familiar in the days that we're living in. But in any case, what is surprising is that Jesus in this parable says that the boss then actually complimented or commended this dishonest manager, not for his dishonesty but for his street wiseness. Now listen to this. I want to read this to you from the message paraphrase, Luke 16 and verse 8. Jesus says, here's a surprise. The master praised the crooked manager. And why? Because he knew how to look after himself. Street wise people are smarter in this regard than law-abiding citizens. Now, that's what the paraphrase says. It actually says, people of, of light. They are on constant alert, looking for angles, surviving by their wits. And sometimes, all we need is common sense. You know, I, I said it's not the ultimate, but at least use it. Start with it. Amen. We have more than that. Thank God we have the mind of Christ. That's what the Bible says. Okay, so let me go on. That's natural discernment. I want to speak about a second kind of discernment. Let me call it supernatural discernment. And it's described in 1 Corinthians 12. As you know, 1 Corinthians 12 speaks about the gifts of the Spirit. And one of these supernatural manifestations of the Spirit is mentioned, well, let me read uh, just a few verses out of 1 Corinthians 12. In verse 7, it says, the manifestation of the Spirit is given. Can you see it's a gift? To each one for the profit of all, for to one is given the word of wisdom through the Spirit. And then I want to skip to verse 10. He says, to another discerning of spirits. And then the next verse says, but one and the same Spirit works all these things, distributing to each one individually as He will. So this is a supernatural gift, and what is it about? It's about recognizing spiritual beings for who and what they really are. I want you to be very clear about this. It's, it's um, a gift that gives you insight into the spiritual realm whether a supernatural manifestation is actually of divine or demonic origin. And there's a great example of that in Acts 16. And you can go and again read it at, at home, and you find that Paul and Silas were in the city of Philippi, and while they were there, a slave girl was following them, and she was loudly proclaiming 
all the time that they were servants of God, proclaiming salvation, and maybe lots of people would have been fooled by that and would have, would have felt that, wow, this is real, this is genuine. Paul actually saw through the Spirit that this is not from the Spirit of God. But she had a spirit of divination, an unclean spirit. And he, he rebuked her, and you can go and read the story about how she was delivered, etc., etc. So don't look at the gift of discerning of spirits and uh, confuse it with somebody that, that would come and say, I discern that you have a bad attitude. You have the wrong spirit. No, it's not that kind of discernment that I'm speaking about. You know, some people think they have the gift of discernment, where it's actually just the gift of suspicion. <laughs> and suspicion is a sign of an unrenewed mind. And incidentally, I've described the gift to you. Let me say this about all of the gifts mentioned in 1 Corinthians 12. You don't have them. Say amen, say aina. <laughs> say aish, say something. Because it's true. You don't have, I, I've heard people claim to have the gift of prophecy. You don't. You don't have the gift of healing. If you do, you should be in the hospital cleaning it up. The gifts operate through you but they are gifts of the Spirit. He distributes them as He wills. So this supernatural discernment operates as the Spirit wills and uh, exposes um, demonic operations. Okay, now, the third kind of discernment, and this is what I'm speaking about for these three Sundays. Spiritual discernment. So there's natural Supernatural discernment, which is a gift of the Spirit, and then there is spiritual discernment. It's also supernatural. In fact, all three of these are gifts from God. But here, I want to call it spiritual discernment because uh, it's, it's something that only a believer can have and only uh, becomes effective when that believer becomes more mature. Now, uh, I, I want to read another important scripture to you, and that's in 1 Corinthians 2, verses 14 and 15. Listen to what Paul writes here. He says, the unbeliever does not receive the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness to him, and he cannot understand them, because they are spiritually discerned. The one who is spiritual discerns all things. And I'm going to come back to this kind of person and describe that kind of person in detail in some of the, the, the sessions following. So there is something that the Bible describes as spiritual discernment, which the unbeliever, the natural man does not have, the, the person without the spirit. And that's the kind of discernment that I'm focusing on. So I want to get to... Um, the, the last point here, and it's very important. We have defined discernment. We have seen that there are three kinds of discernment. Now, here's something that we uh, need to regard as important. You need to value and develop spiritual discernment. And I'm going to show you that spiritual discernment is both, both a gift and a skill. Let me read these scriptures, I've already read them, but um, repetition is the mother of learning. Uh, it's good to read them again. First Corinthians 2, verse 14, again, I'm going to read from a, a different translation. He says, the man without the Spirit, that's natural man, does not accept the things that come from the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness to him, and he cannot understand them because they are spiritually discerned. Okay, and if you can keep your Bibles open there, because I wanna, want to come back to that scripture. Let me read a scripture that I read right at the beginning, Hebrews 5, 13 and 14. Everyone who lives on milk is unskilled in the word of righteousness. 
since he's a child or a baby spiritually. But solid food is for the mature. For those who have their powers of discernment trained by constant practice to distinguish good from evil. Now, if you keep your Bibles open there and flip between those scriptures or whatever, if you have it on your, on your device, then um, I'm going to show you here that these things that Paul uh, speaks about here, are, discernment is both a gift and a skill. Let's talk about a gift. Look at 1 Corinthians 2.14. He speaks about the things that come from the Spirit of God. So very clearly, God is the giver, and it infers that even the discernment to recognize those things is a gift from the Holy Spirit. Now, incidentally, Jesus, when referring to the Holy Spirit in John's Gospel, calls Him the Spirit of truth. If you want to know whether something is truth or untruth, you need to rely on the Holy Spirit because He's the Spirit of truth. He knows exactly what truth is all about. So that's, that's a, a, an important thing. Now, look at Hebrews 5. He speaks about the powers of discernment of mature believers. If you go and read the Scripture in different translation, you will see that it sometimes speaks about senses, it speaks about faculties, etc., etc. Uh, again, something that, that God has given you. But I want you to understand, he's not talking about physical senses. He's not talking about natural powers that you have. He's actually speaking about spiritual faculties that come from the Holy Spirit as a, a gift. So, um, uh, not intellectual perception, not physical senses, but spiritual abilities of insight that God gives you as a believer. Very important. Okay, so discernment, the kind of spiritual discernment we're speaking about is a gift, not something that you earn, but I'm going to show you it's something that you can learn. You have it, but it needs to be developed. So let's talk about skill. It's a skill, Hebrews 5, look at verse 13. It says, everyone who lives on milk is what? Unskilled. So if you're unskilled, you can become skilled. Okay? And he explains to us how we can get skilled. And you'll see the important part that the Word of God plays in this. That's why, Pastor Jeremy, I'm so passionate about Bible school. Because I know that's a place where you can develop your discernment, where you can become skillful, and uh, where God will, will protect you from, from error. So, um, uh, he, then in verse 14, uh, there's an interesting phrase. He says that these powers of discernment could be, look at these two words, trained by constant practice. So, although you have the gift of discernment, you need some training. You need some practice. The word training comes from the Greek word gumnatso. And that's where we get our word gymnasium from. And it was literally used also in that sense. Uh, it was used for an, an athlete uh, training for the, the sports games that they had in, in those, those days. So here's what I want to say. It's important to gym. I'm very familiar with the gym. You can see it. But the gym I'm talking about is Jim Reeves. <laughs> but you see, and, and, and here's where the Bible at least helps me. It says, and, and I'm using my own words here. He says, physical fitness is important, but godly discernment is much more important. And there's such a focus in the world about physical appearance etc., etc., but there's a lack of emphasis on what we really need. You need to be spiritually fit. So, um, 
uh, that's the word uh, 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 translated with the word trained. And then the word practice is also another important thing. So let me again give a plug because Bible school is going to start again sometime. You need a spiritual gym where you can develop these powers of discernment where you focus and hear the Word of God is your instrument in helping you to become a, uh, a, a strong person spiritually. Because please listen to me, don't just rely on your intellect. Even a clever dude could be deluded. You need the Holy Spirit and you need the Word of God. So training is a learning process. You know, one of my favorite things, oh my word, my time is running out here, so I'll, I'll try and conclude. And I'd love to conclude. Sometimes conclude 10 times in one sermon. <laughs> but what is important here is that we need to realize that we are called, the followers of Jesus are called disciples. And I don't care whether you're an apostle or a prophet or what title you, you, you claim for yourself. You never stop being a disciple. And the word disciple means learner. So it doesn't matter where you are at spiritually and in what office you stand. You are or should be a lifelong learner. And learning discernment is part of discipleship. So we need to learn to discern. That's the title of, of the series here. Now I want to read a quote to you from a man called Tim Challies. He's a Baptist theologian and author, and he's, he has some blogs you can go and look up. It's, it's really worthwhile. He's a, he's a real solid guy. Listen to what he says about discernment. He says, discernment is a discipline. And like other disciplines such as prayer and reading the Bible, it is one that all Christians should seek to practice and should seek to practice deliberately. So here's my question to you. Are you developing your spiritual discernment? Are you in training? <laughs> Do you have a spiritual exercise that you're involved in? And I'm, I, I, I want to read another quote by um, an, an American evangelical author called uh, S.D. Gordon. He says, spirit discernment is rare because it's expensive. It means a sensitive conscience, an instructed understanding through study of the book of God. It means a passion for purity, for truth, for the right, for Christ himself, and for living uncompromisingly true in the daily habit. All this lies back of a seeing spirit eye, and these things cost. Discernment is expensive. Here is a very interesting scripture from the wisdom of Solomon, and I'm going to show you in one of the sessions that Solomon was a man of discernment. And listen what he says in Proverbs 23, 23. He says, buy the truth. I always thought the truth was free. Let me say this. God's gifts, and when it comes to the truth, the truth is free, but it's not cheap. It's expensive. How do you buy it? Through your efforts? No. No. Well, let me read the, 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 the full scripture, and then I'll, I'll explain. Buy the truth and sell it not. Not only that, but also get discernment and judgment, instruction and understanding. How can you get these things? How do you buy them? Simply by giving up your so-called wisdom. <laughs> by exchanging your opinion, your ideas. For God's thoughts, for God's wisdom. That's how you buy it. It's just an exchange. And you need to be willing to say, God, what I think is not important. In fact, I want to start thinking your thoughts because your thoughts are higher than my thoughts. 
And your ways are far more superior than my ways. And that should be our heart. And before you can learn to discern, you need to yearn to discern. You need to have that desire for discernment. And that's what I'm going to pray for. Let's stand. So it's a simple challenge this morning. Are you valuing the gift that God gave you? And are you developing it? And however, you know, Bible school is just one of the tools where you can actually go to a spiritual gym. But you can have your personal devotions. That's important. Don't go on one meal a week that you get on a Sunday. Go and eat the Word. Get full of the Word. Practice the Word. And you'll never be caught in the trap of the devil's deceit. Because God will give you that fine discernment that can help you to see this is not of God. Though it might look real, you will know chalk from cheese. And you will know what the right thing is to do. Father, we thank you for your word. Thank you that you can speak in such a clear way to us. And we know we're living in times where there's so much untruth, so much deceit, so many things that are false. We desperately need discernment. And we first of all want to say we appreciate and value that you've given us common sense. But more than that, as children of God, you've given us spiritual discernment. With the help of the Holy Spirit and study of your word, we can actually get to the place where we know the wiles and the schemes of the devil and we won't be tricked by them. I pray for everyone present here, Lord, and I know it's not per chance that they are here. I pray that they will have that desire, first of all, that they will yearn to discern and that you will help them then in this process to learn to discern. Make them passionate about your word and about relying on the guidance of your spirit. 